All right, this is chess video number two, fresh off the heels of the last one. I got my computer audio muted this time, and we're playing black. There's no obvious um, trades like there were last time. We have a pawn that's near promotion. Nothing's hanging. I mean, first thought would be trying to shake off the rook, but I don't, I don't see that working out. Because the pawns and the king, I don't see them having any idea. The pawn is defended like the c3 pawn, so there are potentially ideas with the rook. Rook e6 could theoretically do something. I mean, that knight sticks out to me. I don't know. Right, because it's... I mean, rook c4. The knight... wouldn't have anywhere to go, right? But yeah, that's gotta be it. The knight's trapped. I think that makes sense, right? Because maybe two pawn takes. Hang on. So it is rook c4, knight b2, pawn takes, rook takes, rook, promotion to queen. I guess that works out. <clears throat> Seems a bit fishy, but if they try um rook takes c3 off the bat, you have bishop takes, and then if rook takes rook takes, and in those cases, in that case, um knight c5 drops to the rook, and b6 drops to the bishop. So I think that makes sense. I did not think about, hmm, and I think, because he can't take it with the um, king, right? So if we go like this, he has to take it with the rook, then we can take the rook with the bishop, and so forth. All right. Next up, I see we've got a vague back rank idea, and it, yeah, we've got um, a pawn on e4 is the only thing that can really interact with the opponent's pieces. We got um, that bishop on e7 is also looking a bit odd, like... <coughs> there's no way to trap it, obviously, like the last one. It's, there's too much open space, but... I mean... The... Because, like... Okay, so the pawn on e4 is under attack. It's being protected by the knight, so we probably shouldn't move that. But, um... Hmm. <coughs> Looks like I said, the king move, we're moving any other, any pawn other than the e4 doesn't do anything, and the rook on h8 doesn't really have any ideas either. Pawn e3 looks like it just, like, hangs the pawn in, like, a lot of ways. So that implies to me it should be like a move with a C rook, but I really don't see it. Like there's something big here that I'm missing.
<clears throat> I mean, I, theoretically, it could be a king move, but it should be, like, I thought moves were supposed to be unique, and I don't see what the difference between, like, king f6 and king e6 would make. could theoretically do something like knight b5 hoping to trade the pawn for the bishop but knight b5 yeah because they can't you can't have rook takes knight because like I said there's that back rank idea <coughs> I don't know if this fully makes sense but it's the only idea I've got so I'm going for it all right. Oh, and that lets you fork um, rooks, right? I still don't get what happened there, but. <clears throat> okay, I got that part. Well, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Sorry about that. I gotta keep moving here. Um, <clears throat> off the bat, we got um, that white knight on c3. We can attack with the pawn. And, and we've got the queen backing it up. We have a pawn trade on d5 we can do. But that lets the, I, th like, pawn takes knight is such a good move. It's got to be something better if there's a different, grander idea. But given the scope of some of the ideas we've seen, it might just be pawn takes knight. It could be queen takes b2, which forks the... Yeah, the for forks the knight and the rook because you can't, um, no it doesn't, rook takes queen. Alright. I'm gonna go for it, it's probably wrong, but. Okay, well, all time high standard rating, ta tactic rating. For that um, glorious move right there, I I guess this was a thousand level puzzle, but I don't remember these being quite this easy. This seems a bit odd. All right, so we've got another like almost mate situation with our rook being positioned how it is. The obvious move is to trade bishops, because we have ours way more protected than theirs, so we're going to win that exchange. Going like a check with the rook would be a mate, <laughs> would it not? Because like, g2 is covered by the bishop. F2 and E2 are covered by the king. G1 and E1, yeah. Alrighty, well. That was uh, pretty good. And here's our last one. We're very, uh, these are some pretty weird setups. Like, I mean, I don't play a lot of actual chess, so I'm not super familiar with, like, what opening would make this. They're supposed to be all from real games, but anyways. We've got a bishop trade to start off. That would put their queen on our, on h3, which would threaten our rook, but it's protected by the queen, so that's okay. I mean, 
there's theoretically like a knight move of d5 for the discovery, but I don't see that doing anything. It opens up a discovery on our own rook if you move that bishop on g2. I think... I, once again, I, I'm i just going to go for it. Even if I lose, it's... All right. So we can gain a temple on the queen. Oh, because it's guarded by the queen. So if you just... Okay, yeah. I should have seen that coming. Um, well, hope you enjoyed this content, theoretically, quote-unquote. Uh, yeah, see you next one. One more to go.